When you are building apps with React Native, you usually get pretty good results out of the box. However, there are a few simple things that you can use, that you can implement in like minutes to spice up your applications. And in this video, I will show you five of these tips to instantly improve your React Native apps. So let's dive into them. I've created this super simple example, which is just a tab bar with three views and all of them have just a very long list because this is going to be helpful as we use some uh, scroll events and also want to work on the different areas like this one up here. So as I said, this is using a simple example. It's just a tab bar setup. Nothing really fancy happening here. The only difference that is probably worth pointing out is that these are all stacks for themselves. So if you've used Expo Router before, um, you know that you can have your own layout files for these files. And for our case, for example, here's the Simon page. Uh, and the Simon page is here and has its own stack, just like the big header and the fade header page. So this is the fade header and this would be the big header page. So far, there's nothing going on in these pages. This is just the default setup so that we can then implement something. These pages are okay, there's nothing wrong with them, but you can do so much better with some easy stuff. So let's start with number one. You can use blur effects in your applications really, really easy. In this case, I used the Expo Blur view. I know that it's still an experimental feature for Android and I know there are some problems, especially with uh, older devices. However, the Expo Blur view is really, really great if you can rely on it and use it. So let me show you how. Let's say we want to make our header a blurred background. We can go into our stack.screen setup. So this is the Simon page. And I can simply change my header title to something like Simon. Okay, so let's just see that we're on that page. That's correct. And then you can apply the header blur effect. And there are some different keywords that you can use. So these are all the different options available. Let's just go with the regular one. And I'm going to hit enter. This won't change anything so far because we still need to make our header transparent. As you can see, it still has a white background. So in combination, we want to set the header to transparent. And here we go. Boom, you have a blurred header. And that looks so good in most applications when you have some sort of scrolling going on. However, you might notice that now our app's content is actually behind that header. And there's a simple reason for that. If you make your header transparent, basically the size of the header or the height of the header is zero. That means our page starts right at the top. And therefore the first part here would be hidden. If you want to fix that, there's a super simple fix. So you can import a hook called use header height uh, from React Navigation Elements. Once you get that, you will automatically get the current height of your header and you can use that to your advantage to simply set the padding here. So let's set the padding top of my view to the header height. And as a result, you see my list now starts in the right place and I should still get that. Probably we should do a little refresh. All right, quickly correction. This of course has to be applied to the scroll view. If you apply it to the view, it happens what happened to me. Uh, you won't see any blur anymore. You need to make sure you put it on the right view. But now all of the things start in the right place and we get a nice blur effect on our header. By the way, this is pretty easy done if you're inside a stack. If you're inside a tabs or a draw navigation, you usually will get an error complaining that header blur effect property does not exist in options. Usually what you can do in those cases, is you can drop in the blur view from Expo just like it is into those components. So you can create a custom uh, background for your header with a draw or also for the tab bar. And you can see examples of this in my other clone applications. I think in the ChatGPT clone, I heavily use these blur views. So check it out if you want to see more of them in action. Tip number two is to follow the native platform behavior, especially if you're on iOS, you can easily get a big header. Let me show you what this is and what it means. So here is the page, uh, my second page. Let's give it the header title, uh, something like big header. Uh, I don't want to set the header style. Thank you. So we've changed the header that works. Now we can enable this by saying header large title true. 
If you do this, something will happen on your page. It will immediately look like this. We should probably do the redirect, okay? So we do have this big header here now. Um, and if we scroll, it goes to the top. However, this is not yet perfect. You see there's something snapping. Also, my content is behind it. So let me just show you how you can improve this. Uh, first of all, you can also now apply some styling. So if you want to have like your big title in a different color, you could do it with the header large title style. Additionally, if you want to get rid of this border, this border is usually called the shadow. So you can also now disable this. So header large title shadow visible false would remove it in the big case, but still keep it uh, up here once it collapses. Now, on top of that, I might want to make this look more natural and you can apply this by also setting the right background color. So if this is like fitting nicely or blending nicely into each other, the header works usually better in this way. By the way, I would recommend to uh, header to completely disable the head or shadow in this case. I think this feels a bit better. Now there's still something not quite right. And for that we have to dive into our page because if you're using the header large title property, you also want to set uh, something specific on the scroll view of your page. So you want to set the content inset adjustment behavior and you want to set that to automatic. Once you do this, let's do a quick refresh of our application. And we should see then we start the content starts here in the right place and it goes into the header very gentle. So there's no more snapping and you get this nice cool big header that actually still expands while I pull this down a bit more and then it transitions into the header and you get the classic iOS large header collapsible header effect pretty much for free. Tip number three is a very fast one, but it can have a really huge impact. So for all of you who want to have something like a search bar or general text input connected right in the header of your page, you don't need to worry about creating a custom header or working around this. You can just go into your options and say header search bar options and then define some options for a search bar. Let's say I just want to put in header, uh, the placeholder search Simon. Uh, let's do a refresh and if I'm on that page, voila, I get this nice field here. It collapses right now. So if you don't want to do that, you can simply say hide when scrolling uh, false. And that means my field will be visible all the time, at least when I refresh my application. So with just three lines, three lines of code, one property, we have connected this epic field up here. And it is really great. So if you go into this, you get this for free. You completely get this out of the box. This of course also works with a large title. So if I would go back into the page where we previously used my header large title, I could also hit save here, go there and we would see now we have the same search bar up there. And it works with the collapsible header as well. It's going to be sticky once you scroll it to the top. So for everyone who needs a text input field uh, connected to the top of your page, connected to the header area, use the header search bar options. Tip number four is even faster. It is also related to text inputs. It doesn't really matter if you have a text input up here or if you have text input in your field, but usually what you see in other applications is that you want to kind of leave that field without drag and cancel. So in most applications, you're going to see that if you interact with a background, somehow the keyboard down here will disappear. And there's one line that you need to add to enable this functionality. This one really blew my mind when I uh, understood it. So uh, let's just go into my Simon page where we have a scroll view. And on that scroll view, I will simply set the keyboard dismiss mode. And you can now select between different uh, ways. You can have interactive, non or on drag. So I will set this to on drag. And as a result, I can do something like this. Do you notice this? Uh, I don't know if this comes across correctly in a video, but I can just now drag this view down, this scroll view and all the text inputs or the keyboards that are open 
are dismissed. This is one line and it adds like a gesture handler and interacts with the keyboard in your views. This again still <laughs> blew my mind when I learned about it. So I really hope the keyboard dismiss mode will bring joy to your life as well. Tip number five is about using reanimated for some small gentle animations, especially on scroll. So let me show you what I mean. What you can easily do if you've reanimated in your project, bring in a few dependencies like use animated rev, use animated style, use scroll view offset especially. This is probably the most important one. So let's just code this together really quickly. You generate a scroll reference and you're going to set that on your scroll view. So on my scroll view, I will set the ref to, oh, not everything, just the scroll ref. Then with use scroll view offset, I will automatically get the offset of my scroll view. And with that, I am basically free to do whatever I want to do. For example, I can now create a simple button style using the use animated style hook which will check the scroll handler value. And if that value is greater than 600, which means we have scrolled the page down for like 600 pixels, or you could do whatever you want, I would call the width timing function either with one or two uh, or zero to change the opacity of something, which means I can basically unscroll, hide, uh, or fade in something. Now I just got to need to put in a little view in my uh, app here. So let's put this down below the scroll view. I will use this animated view. Um, I will actually also implement a quick const scroll to top. So that would scroll my scroll ref to the top in an animated way as well. And then we're gonna uh, add the export vector icons. So this animated view has the button style from the hook and also some absolute positioning. So I can now scroll down and after 600 pixels, something should fade in. There it is. So this is the button that just faded in. If I go back, I'm gonna notice that it gently fades out. So it gently fades in and it fades out. And you usually see this in like chat applications when you have a long list of messages. So you can just go back top. By the way, this is eh, not the right place. Maybe it's just 80 or 60 or maybe it's just 40. I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't know where we want to place this. But this is a super easy way to give your users this um, cool moment that, that just makes it feel like, oh, this is a good application. They care about me. They, they do this. And you see, these are just like a handful of lines to use a scroll view offset and a handler in the right place. Um, so pretty much there's no reason not to do this. Um, you can also do this in a case of a header. So let's say, um, I think we used this before in my Airbnb clone. Uh, let's add the header title here to, uh, no, actually not fade, but I wanna set this to an empty string. And additionally, I will also make the header transparent. So we see this page is now filling up the whole view. Again, you gotta be a bit careful in that case uh, with offsets. But if we would like to do the same thing that we did before, but for the header, we could bring in the same stuff we had. Um, this time I will also create a touchable opacity that is animated because that doesn't exist automatically. And then we can do the same thing again on this page. So use the scroll view, use the scroll view offset, set the ref here on my scroll view. And then we can animate the header style using the interpolation. So that means all the values of my scroll handler are now mapped. So between zero and 500, so scrolling from zero to 500, the opacity would be mapped to either zero or one or some values between. And that is done by the interpolation function. So now I just gotta bring in, uh, let's say a custom header. So in that view, I will now place a definition for that stack screen, which defines a header background. So notice we don't have any header yet. Now I'm placing an animated view here, which has this animated styling and also some default styling. And on the header left, I will also add a touchable opacity button. 
Now what happens? In the default case, we have an opacity of zero, which means my header is not visible. However, once I start scrolling, you will notice that at the top something lightly fades in. And you can of course change these values to your needs. But usually you see this in many applications if you scroll, something will happen to the header. Sometimes it fades in, sometimes just a button fades in. And by using our style again, in combination with use scroll view offset, we have this super easy header animation. All right, these were five tips that you can instantly apply to most of your React Native application and will just make the user experience a lot better. If there is something going on, micro animations or any kind of micro interactions on the page, these are the things that users don't really notice, but they improve the user experience in your app. And I've seen this in countless apps in my app reviews or when I investigated the big apps for the clones that I've done, you should definitely check these out. They contain all some great knowledge. Um, these are the things that the big companies implement, but the five tips shown here are things you can implement in like five minutes and they will definitely improve your app. These are just some things that I picked up over the time and they're pretty more impressive things that you can do with React Native. So I would love to know your best tips for React Native that can be implemented really, really fast, but that have a tremendous impact on React Native applications. So share your favorite tip in the comments and I would love to do another episode on this because these are the things that all of us can do in an easy way to improve our React Native apps. And of course, if you want to learn more about React Native, check out galaxies.dev, which also has tons of courses to make even better apps. So stay subscribed if you're not yet, and I will catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.